Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> What's going on everybody and welcome to GNR Central and something I haven't really had the chance to do with this channel is focus on some of the locations where Guns N' Roses recorded some of their great albums and some of the places where they played back in the early days. That's something I really want to get to down the road. But today we're talking about a studio that's not just important in Guns N' Roses history, but that's important in rock and roll history, and that's Rumbo Recorders. Sometimes you've probably heard it as referred to as Rumbo Studios. You guys may have seen the Rumbo tapes on YouTube uh, a number of years ago. I don't think they're still available because of the whole YouTube controversy. So the studio was built back in 1979 by Daryl Dragon of Captain and Tennille fame. So it's about 10,000 square feet. It's got a three-room studio in a quiet town northwest of Hollywood called Canoga Park. Now, the reason why a lot of bands tended to record in Rumbo Studios or Rumbo Recorders is because it was a pretty quiet area and it was really far away from a lot of the distractions of Los Angeles. So at the time it was built, Captain and Tennille were at the peak of their fame and the studio became very successful with not only for the recordings, but for the other artists that recorded there. So aside from Guns N' Roses who recorded there, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers recorded there, Kiss did, Celine Dion, Paul Abdul, Stone Temple Pilots, Rage Against the Machine, and of course probably the most famous album that was recorded at Rumble Recorders was Appetite for Destruction. So the producer of the album, Mike Klink, chose the studio specifically because of its location, being away from Hollywood and all the temptations that the band might encounter. So let's talk a bit more about Rumbo and where it was, it was exactly built. So when it was built back in 1979, Canoga Park in the late 70s was a pretty small sleepy town that was really known for its mall and a rocket dine amongst other things with you know suburban living all around it. And then by the early 80s, most of Canoga Park was developed except for various plots of land that would be developed in the 80s, 90s, and even still today. And actually even today, there's now an apartment complex that was completed right next to the studio. So this part of the valley was the last to be raided by developers, which is now expanding to Porter Ranch. So the fact that Captain uh, built the studio in the, literally in the middle of nowhere instead of developing in Hollywood, Burbank, was quite the gamble. So if you were a musician living in Beverly Hills, Hollywood, or wherever, you would probably have to hop on the 101 and drive for about 30 minutes to Canoga Park, which is not bad, but for the busy lives of entertainers could seem as being undesirable. But that was not the case for Rumble Recorder Studio, as it became extremely successful, as we previously talked about, with a number of different artists recording there. So around 1998, what a lot of fans don't know is that Axel moved his version of Guns N' Roses back to Rumble Recorders. So not only was Appetite for Destruction recorded there, parts of Chinese Democracy were written and recorded there as well. So this was confirmed by the New York Times in a 2005 article they wrote about Chinese Democracy and how it was the most expensive album never made. And then we had the opportunity to exclusively interview Martin Youth Glover, who was the producer of Chinese Democracy, or at least was brought in to be a produce, potential producer in early 1998. And both of them corroborated this story. So according to the New York Times piece, around the start of 1998, Mr. Rose moved the band that he had assembled to Rumbo Recorders, a three-room studio deep in the San Fernando Valley where Guns N' Roses had recorded part, parts for its blockbuster debut, Appetite for Destruction. The crew turned the studio into a rock star's playground. Tapestries, green and yellow lights, state-of-the-art computer equipment, and as many as 60 guitars at the ready, according to people involved in the production. But Mr. Rose wasn't there for fun and games. What Axel wanted to do, one recording expert who was there recalls, was to make the best record that had ever been made. It's an impossible task, and you could go on in inf infinitely, and that is what they've basically done. Now, unfortunately, pressure was mounting at Geffen Records. The label was experiencing a dry spell, making them more dependent than ever on new music from their heavy hitters. And according to one source, the Hail Mary that's going to save the game, the recording expert who spoke on condition of anonymity explained, is a Guns N' Roses record. It keeps not coming and not coming, and the label paid Mr. Rose $1 million to press on with the album, with the unusual promise of another $1 million if he delivered Chinese Democracy by March 1st of the following year. So Geffen also offered one of the producers Mr. Rose had recently hired extra royalties if the recording came before that. Fortunately, by 2003, due to the changing nature of the music business, uh, Dragon of Captain and Tennille sold Rumble Recorders, and today the building still stands and pretty much looks the same. It's now called the Metronome Studio, and they still do recordings as well as special events like wedding receptions, bar mitzvahs, parties, and etc. 
Now, if you guys ever get the chance to go visit Rumble Recorders, I definitely would love to go see it, but you'll be pleasantly surprised to know that a lot of the exterior and interior still remains the same. Even some of the original equipment still remains in the studio, even if it's in a disorganized fashion. So what's even more surprising is that the official RIAA record certifications that were presented to Rumble Recorders are still hanging on the wall. So the guy who ended up buying the studio was able to buy the property as well as the history. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses Central. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Let me know your thoughts. Have you guys ever went to where Rumble Recorders is? Uh, let me know if you've ever been and what your thoughts were. There is also a good video on YouTube of a guy walking around the area and showing you what it looks like. So you guys can go just, if you just enter, you know, Rumble Recorders or Rumble Studios, you should be able to find it on YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. Have yourself a good one. Hit subscribe and go check out GNRCentral.com for the latest and greatest Guns N' Roses news. Take care. Oh, <laughs>